Hi, this is Dave Golly from Pentagon Solutions and welcome to this first presentation on Autodesk Infoworks 360. Um, data sets I'm going to be using are local data sets to Belfast in Northern Ireland. Um, just while I'm on that, um, if you were looking at DTMs in Northern Ireland from Ordnance Survey or LPS, I generally translate these in Global Mapper. As an example in here, you want to probably get it as an ASC file format. But the native file when it's received from Ordnance Survey actually comes in a text format. So that can be easily translated in a bit of software like Global Mapper. It can be translated in Civil 3D, but it is better to get it in an ASC format. So you can simply bring it into Global Mapper. It'll bring in a DTM as shown. Make sure you pick the right coordinate system. We're on Irish Grid or OSNI, or you can pick it by the geocode. And that information can then simply be exported. It's exported as an ARC ASC file. Um, on the building's uh, point of view, uh, what you want to do is probably use the likes of uh, FME Workbench. The raw data from Ordnance Survey comes in DXF, DWG or NTF. You want to make sure that the NTF features are actually being um, closed off as polygons and that you get the feature name behind them. The reason for this, as you'll see, that means that I'll have a list of uh, shape files that I can actually use. So if we have a look at my data set in here, I'll have a list of um, closed polygons for buildings, roads, education buildings, etc. in there. Um, it's just not acceptable to use uh, the native 2D DWG. In fact, you can't use it in Infoworks 360 anymore. Okay, let's simply get started on a model. So I'm gonna do a new model. And um, when the dialog box appears, what we're going to do is set up the options. Okay, so I specify the um, name of my model. I'm going to call this Belfast. And rather define model extents, I'm going to go into advanced settings. I'm going to make sure I'm using the Ordnance Survey um, National Grid. Again, you can pick your coordinate system from the list. It's got abundant coordinate systems in here, but um, I'm working on a local grid system here in Northern Ireland. And I'm simply going to hit OK. And it's going to create my um, actual data set. You'll see the new interface here in the background. It's very, very intuitive. You'll also see that if you're on the uh, 360 version, that you get the you can get access to the roadway design and bridge design um, as well. OK, so now I'm ready to add some data in. So first data I'm going to add in is my um, raster image file which is going to be my terrain model. One thing I'd say in here is if you have a look at the new uh, features where you can import information, the Revit files, um, they come in the correct uh, scaling now. You've got, now you've got Bentley DGN files you can bring in. Very, very important uh, for the uh, building information modeling, certainly with a lot of focus on level two compliance in the UK, you've got IFC, which is industry foundation classes. Now there is an option for this to actually be um, transformed over the cloud or you can actually change the settings to have it local. I changed mine for local in this instance. Okay, simply going to go to raster. I'm going to find my ASC file that I've just converted. Again, it's uh, one sheet from Ordnance Survey. This area represents typically about 60 square kilometers. So let's get the DTM. There's my ASC file and let it generate. Um, and it'll populate that area quite quickly, but what we need to do is double click and again configure that to the actual grid system. So let's do close and refresh. Let that refresh. Okay, so you can see very quickly within about two or three seconds that actual terrain has come in. What we want to do now is actually bring in the ortho photography uh, against that. So again, we're going to add in a raster data source in here. I'm going to go back out into my orthos. Um, and there will be 16 ortho tiles associated with this. In Northern Ireland we have a 16 centimeter uh, data set, new data set that's been released the past couple of years. Simply going to hit open. Again what we need to do is double click on that and um, set up the grid system and close and refresh. And that will probably take about two minutes to come in. Okay so that's my new ortho photography coming in the background. Again that was about two minutes in processing just while it's coming into the screen. I'll explain a bit the new interface. Um, it gives you a lot more room visually here and uh, to navigate and see things but we can actually click on you know our uh, Infoworks button. We can go to our roadways, we can go to bridges which we'll see later on. 
So you can see how quick that is physically to navigate in here. Good quality um, uh, orthophotography as well. It's down to 16 centimeter. But also a data set that we have in Northern Ireland is the road center line data. And really what I want to do is try and get these road center lines uh, in and actually get them in as objects. So I've got them clipped as a shape file. Uh, it's actually providing the whole country as a shape file. You might just want to crop it down to the actual sheet in question. So I'm simply going to go to the road, bring in sheet 147. And when that sheet's being brought in, uh, you simply double click Set up the geographic location the coordinate system, which is Osney, um, Irish Grid. And this time we want to make sure that the type is actually on roads and we close and refresh. And what I'll do is that I'll take that shape file, road center line data, and actually populate road information. So you can see in here we actually have the road data coming through. And um, the nice thing about InfraWorks 360 is all the, the junction information, etc., all that's come across very, very easily. In there in the background as you can see and um, very very intuitive straightforward to actually physically navigate here okay let's build this up a little further what I want to do is look at some of the housing data sets I'm going to bring in well again because we have translated these because I've used the FME workbench to actually translate them um, I'm going to go back into my buildings and I've got a range of different shape files in here. Remember, these will need to be translated. This is not the way they're provided. And I'm simply going to pick up on uh, normal dwellings houses. This is how it's classified by Ordnance Survey. Um, I'm going to go in, specify the geolocation as before, and again, make sure the classification's on building. Um, now, you can assign a roof height and you can put rules in for roof heights if there's property data behind it. There's no property data currently on the Northern Ireland data set, so I'm going to make an assumed roof height of uh, 10 metres. I'm going to simply hit uh, close and refresh. What will happen now is all the residential buildings uh, in the area will actually be populated with the building height of 10 metres. I'll show Okay, so we've got all the buildings now coming in. Now each one of these buildings we can individually pick up. Um, we can right click and edit information for it. So we can change individual buildings in here if we didn't have the right information. The other thing that we can actually do is reconfigure the data set uh, information and we can uh, simply change that in there for the likes of slope information. I could say, well, the slope of all the buildings actually is a 30 degree pitch. I'll add that in. There'll be some anomalies in there for uh, houses that don't have that kind of pitch, but um, it's all down to the type of data that you actually um, receive in the first instance. Okay, just let that refresh. I'll come in. So you can see the pitch of the houses actually coming in there. And again, we can actually change that. What we can also do in here is add um, a style to this. Now, I, I have no real properties behind this. So I'm just going to add a generic style. These houses in this area are typically red brick, so we're just going to add that under the properties. So in the style rule, um, I can simply pick a style I want to use, and I can say brick, close and refresh, and add it in. Again, we can change style settings as well, and you can add the styles up as an actual thematic uh, control or rule or, or rule based control in there. <coughs> Again, that information populates through, and you can see we've got our buildings. Okay, let's do that for uh, some water features in here. So again, we'll add in the shape files. Um, we'll have a look for some damp pond information. We'll configure it as before. Put the geolocation in, and we'll make sure that the type is the water area, and we'll close and refresh. So again, it's a very large area, it's about 60 square kilometers. It represents one full 10,000 tile uh, off the Osney grid. So what we can do is we can see down here, um, some of the water areas are getting populated, it's still refreshing in the background. 
and again you can see um, it is very very good detail on the actual water it's a nice visual presentation in there and that, that information has been taken from the actual Os OSNI data sets in there so we've got weak pockets we also have pockets of streams etc okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to build this up a wee bit further and add in some of the commercial buildings okay so that's populated um, some of my buildings have simply added them in um, and, and pause the video in here but um, what I have now is all the commercial buildings recreation buildings in there so with additional five ten minutes work um, you can get the, that building content in very very easily so you can see now that the model is actually starting to fill up and uh, have a really really good content in there um, the other thing we can do with the new interface in here, we can actually uh, control the visibility. It's just slightly different orientation for it in here um, where it's located. So we can say control the visibility. So we can easily take information on and off. So we can um, go in here and look at the likes of water areas. So we can take this off. We can go in the likes of our buildings so we can actually just say remove them in there. So it makes navigation an awful lot easier. Um, less clutter if you're trying to find your way about and then if you want it back on again you just simply take it back on. Um, <clears throat> if you're looking for any of your cloud settings etc in there or your um, um, to change the actual sun and daylight that, that's very easy to do. So what we can actually do is uh, go over to our settings in here um, and look at our presentation information and you can see it's on the left hand side and it's quite nice because you still see the information in the background so we can go into sky and um, Sun and sky sense, we can actually change that information in there. So, you know, we can change the date, we can see what impact that is going to have visually in there, and we can actually see the actual time as well. Um, in the background, we can also change wind direction and wind speed. So, if I change the actual cloud color in here, you can see I'm actually getting an animation in the clouds. So, the animation in the clouds going in here, and again, we can just pop that down, take it off and take it off and again we can change the date and time of year so let's just pop that wind speed down and give it just a wee bit of cloud cover in there if we have an area that we actually want to bookmark and um, what we can actually do is zoom into that area go up to our bookmark and simply add it in so we can say add bookmark and give it a name So it means we can simply, as we're navigating about the model, we can easily uh, create um, bookmark areas. So let's go back out here and actually add another bookmark and we'll call that overview. For those of you who know uh, InfraWorks, you'll just see it's in a slightly different location. So again, we can simply navigate between them by just uh, clicking. So it's a good way to get that information. The great thing about InfoWorks 360 is you're not hitting save all the time, it's actually saving this back physically into the database in here as well. Okay, that, that's a quick overview of getting started. I'm going to follow up with some other videos um, when we're looking at more design parameters in here. Um, but you can see it's a very intuitive interface, very easy to get started. Um, most of our questions would come around how you're populating data. You may need to look at other sources such as Global Mapper or uh, using Workbench tools in there. Um, I'm David uh, Golly, thanks for listening and look out for the other videos.